What's up guys? Happy Friday. It's almost the weekend. Yay! So every Friday I'm going to do this thing where I publish an interview uh, that I either did recently or sometime in the past, but it's going to be relevant to what's going on today. This week is a conversation I had with Richard Linklater, Louis Black, and Karen Bernstein. Now if you don't know who Richard Linklater is, he directed Boyhood, he also directed Fast Food Nation, and of course Days and Confused. Say man. You got a joint? Now, some people actually say that if it weren't for Richard Linklater letting Matthew McConaughey talk about rolling joints in that Chevy Chevelle, he would have never had the opportunity to roll his boogers in that Lincoln MKC. And by some people, I mean me. Moving on, Lewis Black, not to be confused with this Lewis Black. And you sniffling shits would die without me! <laughs> but just as necessary for our livelihood. The co-founder not just of South by Southwest, but also the Austin Chronicle. Finally, Karen Bernstein is an Emmy and Grammy Award winning director and producer. She won an Emmy for American Masters and a Grammy for Best Long Form Music Video with Lou Reed. Very jealous. So what we're talking about in this conversation is how Karen and Lewis teamed up to make Richard Linklater... That actually sounds like there's parents. Okay. It, they teamed up to direct Richard Linklater, Dream is Destiny. It's a documentary all about where he came from, the Austin film scene, and how he really helped push forward this idea of independent films making it to the big screen at a time when that really wasn't done as much as it is today. And I think it's particularly interesting today because there are so many independent film productions out there with cameras like this Canon that I'm shooting on right now. It just lowers the bar for the amount of money you need to spend to make something that looks really good. And then of course there's YouTube and there's all sorts of other platforms, Vimeo or whatever, where you can showcase your independent films and production. So I think there's no better time to talk about one of the greats in independent filmmaking than right now. So check out this interview. The film Richard Linklater, Dream is Destiny, is, uh, <laughs> is a look at the career of Richard Linklater. But in the way that career unfolds, it's also really about community and about the process of filmmaking and of leading a community. My, my first question for this is, you're sitting here with all these interviews about you. How does it feel to have uh, you know, a documentary about yourself? Um, uncomfortable. I'm, I'm a mm -hmm. behind the camera guy. I don't know how it happened. They're very uh, <laughs> subtly. I was making a movie, and the next thing I knew, they were doing some interviews with me. And, uh, here we are. At least it was painless for me. I only did a few interviews. It's, <laughs> it's their movie. And, well, you know. what, what inspired you guys uh, to do this film? Well, I, I, I've been making arts and culture biographies for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm a relatively, compared to these two, I've, I've only been in Austin for, what did we decide, 14 years, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> and that's, that's new. I'm a newbie. Mm -hmm. But I thought, I thought it was, I always found it really interesting having made arts and culture biographies about a range of different people from mm -hmm. all around the country that in Austin was really one of the first places I found where um, there wasn't a lot of formal separation between things, you know, that you could be a musician and a filmmaker and that everybody kind of were woven together. So I thought it would make, and, and that Rick is really the perfect conduit for telling that story because he's He's really inspired and kept it going for so many years through a variety of activities. So I pitched it in New York, and I think when Boyhood hit, it became really, really the thing it is now, <laughs> of course. Um, everybody was suddenly very interested. Yeah, funny how that works, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And I thought I really thought of all the people in Austin that I could make this with it would be Lewis, because mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, he's really the arts and culture king or scion of Austin. And you know, I I would be completely ill-informed without him, and so he's really made it possible. And what is it about the the style of filmmaking that's so important? Either one of you can answer that we, we felt, in this case, that the film had to be, was about a very special filmmaker. And a filmmaker who doesn't really do straight ahead narratives as much as he does an enormous amount of character development and then letting you get to know those characters really intimately. So the idea was to concentrate on his creative history, his creative life, and to look at the, how that cinema gets made and got made. And one of the things about Rick is he has an enormous amount of authority early on. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the evolution is in terms of his confidence, but his vision is always there. 
Mm -hmm. And there's also that idea of just making it happen, you know, in yes. your backyard, finding a way, which, um, and maybe you can speak to this, you've got the YouTube culture right now where a lot of people are making their, their own things now probably more than ever. What do you think about it? Are you happy with sort of, there's wide arrays of quality out there, but uh, do you like the direction yeah. it's going? Well, it's a great time to be making films, I think. Mm -hmm. like technology is your friend. It's very affordable and accessible and just you can really do it yourself where mm -hmm. it was harder when I was first you know starting so that's the good news but the the challenge it's still hard to tell a story mm -hmm. you can make a funny little bit but to actually tell a cohesive story narrative that's that's still a big nut to crack and, yeah you know it takes a long time I think to develop all that skills yeah so, but you know anything that puts someone in the arena where they're they're working at it is, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, directors that are coming up behind you that you look to and say, hey, you're doing, I love your work, you're doing a great oh, job? So many. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's so many. I don't know where it's, you know, it, it's forever. You know, yeah. New generations keep going. coming. It's weird for me to watch this film and realize, oh, I'm not the new, you know, I haven't been for years, but you kind of delude yourself and like, oh, okay, I'm kind of a middle-aged guy, <laughs> mid-career. There are all these great young, you know, filmmakers. But, you know, you run into them all the time. Yeah. So it keeps your keeps your faith uh, going. I remember I was just so happy for, like, you know, Ryan Coogler with Creed. I thought yeah. he knocked it out of the park. To go from, you know, Fruitville Station to that is a great, it's you know, amazing. it speaks well for where he's going, I think. And, I mean, there's so many. Yeah, someone like James Ponsell. I just ended up talking to him the other day. Did end of tour. And yeah, some of his movies I admire. But there, there's so many. Um, well, final question for you: How weird was it having them go through all your journals and stuff like that? And were you afraid <laughs> they'd find something that you uh, forgot you had written? Maybe. No, I mean it was so far. It was so long ago <laughs> yeah. that I kind of see that as almost a different person. Not mm -hmm. really, but I, I kind of thought, well. I would be okay. I just, I sort of trusted them to, to just fit it in there where it might make sense or they wouldn't use it. So <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. They somehow got me to be more of an open book than I usually would be. So Cool. And then final question for you guys. Um, do you have any blackmail on him that we don't know about yet that you can reveal here? Absolutely none. Okay, cool. What, 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 what we have is there on the screen. No, I mean, it was interesting because it, I was, I think, at your house, right? And I had to scan in pages of things that they had just talked about during the interview. And I really, and I think your kids ran in at one point and they were like, what are you doing? They're like, scanning your father's journal. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I thought, God, this is really weird. Here it is, 8 o'clock at night, and I'm still here <laughs> scanning. Like, but, you know, I was really, I was, you know, I, I don't think we were interested in revealing anything more personal than just the inspiration behind the artist. Of course. I mean, that's that's of always course. the best story anyway. Absolutely. I was just hoping maybe you had something that you stuffed in your back pocket. You never know. <laughs> He's actually had one of the more clean lives of anybody. I mean, there were times when Lewis and I would say in the edit room, it's like, God, couldn't he have been a drug addict? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what was he, a drug addict? You know, <laughs> what, what about Chappaquiddick? If there yeah. was like something <laughs> that, <laughs> it was still. really nothing. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you want to see one of my independent productions that I guarantee isn't quite as good as Richard Linklater's, just click here. Or if you want to see an interview I did with Katie Couric about her new film coming out called Under the Gun, click here. I'm fine with John yesterday. Yay. Good. Where do you got? Are you guys? Where are you staying? Uh, staying. We have a place. Um, 